Hi, it's Kernatex here with a new series of videos all about a new project from the Linux and Scratch team called Multilib LFS or MLFS. So as you can see on the screen, there's actually two new projects that have appeared, um, MLFS and GLFS. GLFS I will be doing in later videos. Um, I'm not doing it at the moment because it follows on from MLFS. So the multi-lib LFS allows 32-bit libraries to, compi to be uh, compiled and coexist with 64-bit libraries. Um, currently, Linux from scratch is pure 32 or 64-bit, depending on what architecture you build on. So the MLFS project uh, allows, as I say, 32-bit to libraries to coexist with, uh, or M programs to coexist with. 64-bit um, binaries on the same system and then the GLFS project, project they um, use the MLFS to take advantage of that coexistence of the two different um, architectures. So what I am plan on doing is I'm going to be doing several series of videos. Um, I'm going to be doing initially this current one that you've started uh, watching, which is building MLFS on a 64-bit machine. So we end up with a 64-bit operating system with 32-bit capabilities also. Um, and then in a separate video, I'll be covering GLFS, um, which involves installing Steam and Wine mainly um, on the multi-LFS system and showing obviously wine working and steam working on that system and then finally i'm going to do a third video which will be a longer series of videos just purely because of what it is i'm actually going to install or attempt to install glfs on a 32-bit machine so um, it'll be a pentium 4 from around about 20 odd years ago 22 years ago um, just to prove that um, the gaming part of it can work on a 32-bit uh, machine, which the instructions, as you read the document, does suggest should work. Um, so that's my intention. It's like three three sets of videos I'm planning, uh, including the current one you're listening to. So what I'm going to be doing is to use the... Um, Linux from scratch 12.3 that I built uh, recently at the beginning of March 2025. I'm going to use that as a host. Um, something I don't normally do is use LFS from a host as a host. Sorry, because um, well, generally if people come into LFS, they've um, not built LFS before, so it's best to start from a an existing distribution that you can download. Um, but LFS is ideal, obviously, to rebuild itself. It, it's it's proof that it's a, a capable operating system in a way that it can rebuild itself. Um, so there's no harm in doing that at all. It's a, it's a good thing to do, I, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll be using 12.3 to build multi-lib Linux from scratch. Um, both these projects are currently rolling release. I don't know if they're going to exist for a long time, if they're projects that are planned on on being a permanent addition uh, to the stable of different Linux from scratch. As you can, as you can see, they've got LFS, BLFS, ALFS, MLFS, and GLFS now. Um, I assume that depends on what interest there is for supporting the project. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's, it's a rolling release at the moment. Um, if I go into it, um, let's click it here. There's a description there about um, basically what I've been talking about, but in some some more detail. Um, but as I say, it's a rolling release, so therefore um, there's instructions on how to um, fetch the manual from the Git repository. 
Um, and obviously, depending on how you do that, you'll be getting the latest version, um, which could possibly be a bit buggy or there could be other issues. So what I've done is I've downloaded the specific release that, or not release, um, a specific revision that was available at the time I, I started um, working on this to test. Um, and I'll be using that revision. So it's from the 11th of March, I think it is. I'll be using that revision and the parallel revision for GLFS throughout all these videos, just for some consistency. Um, the last thing you really want to do is to um, start working on a, a project like such as this and then have the revision updated and you find that the notes you're working from have been updated and they don't quite relate to the older um, pages of the book, if you like. Um, so it's best to pick a revision and stick to it. So I'll be showing you what revision. Well, there's, there's the book I've downloaded. You can see it's on my local server. And the revision version is 8.3.3 that I've been using. And I'll show you how to uh, get hold of that specific version uh, if you want to follow along. The, I did have a few issues. Um, some of them I know were down to me. I've missed something or copied and pasted something wrong. Um, but I got round them. Um, but there were a couple of issues that I did have with both the projects. But um, as, as I go through, um, I'll bring those issues to light and you know, maybe there are things that need to be fixed. I know one or two issues, especially with the GLFS on the 32-bit, were down to the um, hardware in use because it was so old. Um, but again, I'll, I'll point out what I can and what I'm aware of. But other than that, it was a um, relatively successful um, build that I did. So I, I'll, I'll consider 833 to be you know, fairly stable in terms of uh, building uh, just be prepared, like I say, it's not a stable build. It won't have been tested thoroughly. You know, it could be in the next day on March 12th that uh, revision 834, 835 was, um, you know, the, the default for that day and so on. So it could be moving day by day or possibly even hour by hour, depending on how they um, release the revisions. Um in fact, we see now, I mean, today, what's today's date? It's the 31st of March now, so that's 20 days on. Um, if I jump into this one here. Yeah, so it's, it's moved on seven in that time. So, okay, so there's been seven more revisions made. So there's probably corrections or additions and so on. So it could be a better build. Um, it might be there's some bugs fixed or something or it might be something else has been introduced since but as I say just pick a version and stick with it throughout the whole build um, to help prevent any other issues creeping into what you're doing. Um, as it says there there are uh, well it says what do I need to build an MLFS, MLFS. Um, or oh, sorry why would you want to um, you may have old software that's only available as a binary that needs to be run on 32-bit, but you've only got 64-bit machine, for example, um, or 64-bit operating system. So if it's a multi-lib, you can run that alongside the 64-bit programs. Um, other software that requires multi-lib, you, you may have other software that needs to run on multi-lib. For example, Steam is a good, good example. A lot of Steam is still 32-bit, but there are 64-bit um, parts of it as well and as it says the GLFS depends on multi-lib so if you're wanting to build GLFS and have a go at building steam and wine from scratch then um, MLFS is, is mandatory to get going there's three different versions um, there's this 32-bit version um, I can't remember what the MX, does it mention it here? It does mention it somewhere, what the differences are. Uh, oh, it's here. Um, yeah, it describes the, uh, exactly what multi-lib is and how, how it works. Um, 
so it describes that 32 bit binaries can be executed on 64 bit OS as well. But then there's another architecture which is somewhat between 32 and 64 bit called x32. And that is the binaries that operate with a full instruction set with the 64 bit CPU but in a 32 bit address space. So they're limited to the 32 bit addressing, which is 4 gig maximum, but they're capable of running 64 bit instructions. So that's what the MX32 bit is. And then there's an option to build both of these, these extensions. So to build a pure multi lib 32 bit, 64 bit binary, uh, sorry, system and um, libraries that allow the 64 bit instructions, but only to execute in a 4 gigabyte or 32 bit address space. So that's what um, those three options are. So I just stuck with the basic uh, system to allow 32 bit binaries which would be in a 32-bit address space to coexist with the 64-bit binaries in I can't remember what the address space of 64-bit is currently it has been extended over time um, but it's, it's, it's probably relevant actually uh, so this is the basic normal if you like multi-lib environment and that's what what you'd need for GLFS as well um, as it says it's hard to test unless there are old binaries available to use um, in the GLFS uh, videos, I did run an old version of Factorio because they're, or they used to be, I'm not sure if they are around, but I still have some 32-bit binaries from about, I think they're from about 2015, 2016 or so. And I ran them and they, they ran fine. So it proved that 32-bit was um, working correctly, it proved that the libraries that have been installed for GLFS were working correctly. So I'll, de I'll demonstrate that as well. And um, I don't know if, I'll, if if they don't exist anymore. Those 32-bit Factorio binaries. I'm I'm not sure what the status is. If I'm allowed to redistribute them, um, it is just a demo. Um, but maybe I can check up on that if they're not available and if it's clear then I, I can make that available. Otherwise I'm sure there's other 32-bit binaries you could find on the internet to prove um, that your 32-bit is working. And in any case something like Steam um, as I say is still partially 32-bit and 64-bit so as long as you can get something like Steam working that will that, prove that the 32-bit is working within the GLFS environment. Um, and there are other ways to test it anyway to prove that it works. Um, there is a System V and a System D version of M MLFS. Um, as you probably know if you're watching this, uh, I stick with the System V just because, or System 5 purely because it's simpler. It's um, Although to say it's more basic is probably doing a disservice. It's just simpler and basic therefore it's easy to install it's not as complex a system as system d is um so I'll, I'll be sticking with that and there's some credits down there and thanks so as i say the first thing maybe we should do is to get on to the uh, linux from scratch 12.3 machine i built so let's go into that if you recall it had the ip address 101 i've not added it to the um, name server or anything so it hasn't actually got a name I'm not sure if it would be found or not if I refer to it by its name uh, to be quite honest I can't remember what I called it now so I'll just uh, log in there in fact there's no users on there so I'll need to uh, let's get bash up I'll need to log in as root and if you remember that I set root to or set SSH to allow access from root uh, ah no sorry i didn't show this bit did i no it was a lfs yeah i didn't um actually install any additional functions did i for um open SSH or anything so I'm gonna to have to show that um, okay right so yeah okay so normally uh, if you just finished Linux from scratch you wouldn't have been able to do what I've just done uh, because you wouldn't have these 
programs installed so I'll need to set that up if I just show you the etc release so that shows it's Linux and Scratch 12.4 and if I do LSCPU you can see this is the machine I built on um, a laptop with an i7 um, 6500U CPU in it so you can see it's the same machine it's the same build in fact if I show you the dates of the directories that are created you can see they're created um, beginning of March when um, it was initially built um, or completed rather so yeah so what I need to do is I need to I say that um, once you've finished Linux and Scratch, if you just finish at the end of the book, you've got no way of getting in remotely. There's no additional features, convenience features or anything. There's no um, user that's been created, a uh, normal user. So what we need to do is to boot into an, a host system again um, to allow us to mount the LFS system as we did before, mount the virtual file systems and enter into the true environment which will allow us to build any additional um, packages um, and what I'll do inside that environment is I'll build or rebuild OpenSSH um, and I'll in fact I'll rebuild GPM I've actually put GPM on there to allow the mouse to work um, again for convenience uh, and then when that's done I'll be able to reboot back to this and then I'll SSH in like, like much, as, much as I've done now and built some more convenient uh, convenience packages. Um, oh yes, in fact I realise I haven't prepared the machine properly, I haven't taken it back when I've done my testing. I haven't. I should have taken this back to where it was as it was um, just a single partition. I think I've left the partitions on there that I was testing with. Yes, I have. So I'll just quickly show that, um, how that's done. Um, and then we can carry on with actually building the MLFS. So you can see the whole sequence through rather than just jumping and saying, yeah, this is what you need to do without showing you. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'll have to set the machine up so I can plug in the um, screen grabber into the laptop um, to show that so what I'll do is I'll shut this down now and come back and set the as I say, set the screen grabber up and carry on from there <laughs> 